Hey guys, it's Victoria. Um, we're doing things a little different for this True Crime Tuesday. I'm by myself today. We're gonna do the get ready with me's by ourselves individually so that you're not having to focus on two different people doing makeup at the same time. So we're gonna talk about true crime and do some makeup. So today we're talking about Diane Downs I almost said Diane Diamond. That is a true crime reporter. <laughs> Diane Downs, she is a mess. So normally I go into their background. Um, I'm not gonna go into her background because I honestly don't think it had anything to do with what she ended up doing. She'll claim at some point that it does have something to do with what she ends up doing, but then she recants what she says. So let's get into it. May 19th, 1983, Diane shows up to the emergency room with her three kids in the back seat. They'd been shot. She is shot in the arm. Um, she says she flew there, you know, some man shot him. One of her daughters, little Cheryl, she's seven. She's dead on arrival. And then um, Danny, and Christy are just injured really, really badly. Diane gets shot in the arm. She's not sharp, she's not harmed all that badly. It's so hot in here. Just so everyone knows, that's why I'm sweating. After Diane was treated, the police questioned her and they kinda got this weird story about what happened. So apparently what happened was Diane was at a friend's. She went to visit a friend's house and they didn't leave the friend's house until about 9.30 that night, in which you have three small children and you're leaving at 9.30. I mean, I've done it before, but the next part is what's so odd. She said that they like to go sightseeing. If it's 9.30 at night and you have a three-year-old in your back seat, you're not gonna go sightseeing because they're either really super whiny or they're asleep. So that didn't make sense to the police. Um, but she said what happened next was she, was she saw a road that she wasn't familiar with. So she said, let's go see what's on that road. So she turns down that road and then there's a man with bushy hair is what she said at first. Um, the police later said shaggy hair, and we'll get into why they changed it to that. But um, she said she start, he started to flag her down and was kind of like yelling, and he looked like something was wrong, something was going on. She said that she pulled over. Why would you pull over? I mean, the 80s were a different time, maybe. You did that for people in the 80s, I don't know. I wouldn't, but she pulled over. She said, hey, what's going on? Everything okay? He says, I'm gonna take your car. And she, this is what she says that she tells him. She actually turns the car off, takes the keys out with her, gets out of the car, when he says, I'm going to take your car, she says, are you kidding me? And she laughs. Okay, first of all, that's an odd, that's an odd way to handle that. And then he pushes her out of the way and shoots all three children at close range. So then she tries to get back in the car and he grabs her arm she pretends to throw the keys in the grass across the street. 
he grabs her arm, shoots her, in just in the arm, not, you know, he shot to kill the other kids, apparently, you know, and then he ran across the street to get the keys, and she just took off, because she kept the keys, she was just pretending to throw the keys, so, she says she races to the hospital, fast as she could get there, it was just like, she said, I could hear Christy in the back choking on blood. You know, I told her, bend over, don't choke. And the things that she was saying, and <laughs> we'll talk about it a little bit in a little while when we talk about her, like, recorded interviews. They're pretty rough. They're upsetting. But that was just like, okay. So, in the police taped interviews, she just sounds really cold. She's not really asking about her children. One of her children, mind you, is already dead. The other two are, one of, Danny is paralyzed from the neck down from his injuries. Christy had lost so much blood that she had a stroke. So she, they really didn't know if Christy was even going to make it. Um, in the taped interviews, I'm going to read a quote from her that really upset me. Like, I had to take a second. It says, I just kept saying, God, do what's best. You know, if you got to die, if they got to die, let them die, but don't let them suffer. I mean, why would you say that right after? That's upsetting. And then the surgeon that took care of Christy then sought out Diane. Um, he said that she just wasn't acting right. That scared me. And um, that, and I know that you can't, you can't judge people's reactions. You can't, you don't know how people are gonna react to things like trauma, losing their children, being shot, watching their children being shot. But she was like, what she said to Christy Surgeon was, man, my new car is ruined. There's blood all over the back seat now. That's really super cold for you to say about something that just happened to your child that ended up killing one of them and maybe and at that point she didn't know if Christy was even going to make it so initially people were really freaked out they thought there was some man walking around just shooting children um so they kind of just kept their kids inside um it was all over the news there's a man that shot these three children um watch out for him and Diane actually helped make a composite sketch of what the man looked like and um, she said that it was a shaggy haired man kind of looked like a drifter top deal but what we know now is that shaggy haired man is actually something that police would use if they didn't think the suspect was real, like if they thought maybe if Diane was lying, like she was, spoiler alert. The police initially put out an APB on the shaggy haired man. Um, they searched the scene and the only evidence they found was spent shell casings. It was for a 22 caliber handgun that was all that they, that was all the evidence they had. Diane was the only witness. So they had to go off of what she said. But things just weren't really adding up. Um, the police at this point, they were noticing that um, she was just, not acting consistent with someone that had just went through this trauma. 
someone that had just lost their child, someone that had just been shot in the arm in the middle of the night and rushed their children to the emergency room. Um, so they did a taped interview so that maybe they could figure something out about this shaggy haired man that Diane seemed to think shot them. Um, you can look this interview up online and watch it on YouTube and it's really, it's really stupid. She is an idiot. She is giggling and it almost looks like she's flirting with the man asking her questions about what happened. At one point she, she's like, okay, this is me pretending to throw the keys and she pretends to throw the keys and laughs about it. That's supposed to be the point that your children just got shot. So one of your children just got murdered at that point and you, why are you laughing? This is not a laughing matter. And then she hits her cast on the door and then she's like, oh, I hit my cast. <laughs> like a psychopath, she's just laughing because she obviously doesn't know the right reactions to have for anything that's happening around her. So I'm gonna list off some red flags. They're like scarlet red flags. Number one, Christy wakes up. She is in the room with um, two detectives, doctors, nurses. So people that she doesn't know these people are strangers that Christy has not grown up around. They are people that are taking care of her. But the person that's supposed to comfort her is her mother. And when her mother walks in, everyone notices that Christy, her eyes glaze over with fear. Her heart rate goes from 104 to 164. And she is terrified. That's your mother. That's the person that's supposed to bring you comfort when this horrible ordeal is happening. And Christy is scared to death of her. So that's red flag number one. Red flag number two was that nurses noticed when Diane got to the emergency room that no first aid was given to the children, but Diane's arm was neatly wrapped with a dish towel. So, I mean, I can't say that I wouldn't try to put something over my arm if I got shot in the arm and I was trying to get my kids to the emergency room. I don't know what I would do in that situation. Can't tell you, but I can tell you that I would try to help my children before myself, and she did not do that. Red flag number three. Soon as she got away from the kids in the hospital, she called the man she was having an affair with. His name was Robert Knickerbocker. He was a married man. Um, she had worked with him. They, um, had been having an affair for a while. I think that they had broke things off because he didn't really want to be a dad to her kids. He thought it was inappropriate for her to have her kids around when he was around. And I mean, so those are all really big red flags because she didn't even check on her kids she went to call her boyfriend, her ex-boyfriend, because she wasn't even with him at the time that this was happening. Police started to realize that forensic evidence wasn't matching what Diane was telling them. Um, there was no blood on the driver's side or any gunpowder residue on the driver's panel. So the story that she was telling them about the man reaching inside 
the door to shoot the children, that just couldn't have been true because there would have been some sort of spatter, some sort of gunpowder residue, something to prove that that would have happened and there was nothing there at all. So police were like, wow, this lady is just digging it deep. So going back to Robert Knickerbocker, he actually reported that Diane was stalking him. Diane, you insane person. She was stalking him. She had claimed that she was okay with killing his wife so that they could be together. And I mean, that's kind of a red flag too, Diane. You can't do that. Um, she also had an ex-husband. His name was Stephen Downs, or Steve Downs. Um, him and Knickerbocker said that Diane owned a 22 caliber handgun. They went and found the gun, found the gun in Diane's home. The spent shell casings had, they had somehow matched them to the ones that weren't used, that weren't shot yet. That is a big, she's still denying, you know, she's still, she's still going to the media at this point. You freaking psychopath, Diane. She's going to the media. She's going, you know, someone find this shaggy-haired man that shot my children. I need help. Um, she claims that she would never hurt her children when, you know, allegations start coming out against her because her story is not a good one. Her story doesn't add up to what the evidence states. Police already know that it's her. So prosecution's building a case against her. Diane's still going to the news. One of the news stations actually has to hold one of their interviews with her because they knew if they aired it that she wouldn't get a fair trial where she was. So what she says was they asked, do you think you're lucky? She says, no, I'm not lucky. My children were the lucky ones. <laughs> Diane, you've lost your damn mind is what you've done because this is just putting the nail in your coffin. Christy gets to the point where she can talk. They've already got all this evidence against her. Um, Diane can't have her kids back. They're safe now. Everything's good with them. Um, Christy tells them that her mom shot them. She remembers everything about it. She remembers what song was on. It was Duran Duran, Hungry Like the Wolf. And that comes back, and it's upsetting what happens with that, too, because... <laughs> Diane Downs is a freaking lunatic. Anyway, she's arrested. Um, they go to trial, and when she comes back for trial, she is very, very, very pregnant. And it surprises everyone. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, this insane lady is pregnant after she tried to kill her children. You can go see her walking into the courtroom with her little smocks, maternity smocks on, looking crazy as ever with her little crazy eyes. Um, she says, you can't replace children, but you can replace the feeling that they give you. And they give me love and they give me, they give me security and they give me all this other stuff. And, it's just very sad the way she says things. And she obviously just got pregnant for sympathy. I had read somewhere that Diane 
had been a surrogate mother for someone in the past she said that she enjoyed being pregnant but she just didn't enjoy having children and I think that's maybe had something to do with it she just liked the thought of being pregnant this crazo went to court had all this evidence against her she denied 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 and then Christy walks in Christy God bless her testifies against her mom she says my mom shot us shot us in the back seat of our car on this road we turned down a road and she shot us um so that's what got her that's what got her convicted i think because she did end up getting convicted one of the things that did happen in the trial though was that to drive the point home the prosecution played hungry like a wolf during the trial she didn't take it that way she was just tapping her feet snapping her fingers bobbing her head along she just was having a good old time with it like the lunatic she is she's just insane um, so that's how that went you know her lawyers had to be like Diane knock it off you look like a crazy person and she's like oh sorry my bad she gets convicted and then she says I did not do this to my children I'll do what the court says okay Diane you don't have a choice you're gonna do what the court says because you have to you can't just walk away and be like well I'm not going to jail you have to go to jail Diane sorry she says well I'm gonna I'm gonna adhere to what the court decides but I'm gonna find who did this to my children and they're gonna pay for what they did. I think they already found who did this to your children, Diane. Well, Diane, she escapes. She climbs a fence, you know, prison fence, barbed wire over it, razor wires, um, she throws her clothes over it. I guess that means she just throws her clothes over it so she doesn't get cut so bad. One of the women that she was in prison with gave her her husband's address. So she went and stayed with this man. This was like eight miles away from the prison that she was in, I'm pretty sure. It wasn't very far. She didn't get very far. Um, she was there for 10 days and she got caught and she went back to prison so let's talk about what happened to Christy and Danny so Christy and Danny you know are gonna have problems they're gonna have medical issues they're gonna have some mental issues because their mom's insane and tried to shoot them the prosecutor this sweet man was like, I want to take them. I want them to live with me and my wife and we'll take care of them. And they can, you know, I'll get them help and they'll, when they're ready to talk, they'll have someone there to talk with them. And he adopted Christy and Danny. And as far as I know, Christy and Danny have had really nice lives. They've lived with this prosecutor and his wife. You know, that's really, these stories don't always end very well for the children that are involved and it just makes me happy that this one time that it did. Um, as for the other baby, Diane had this baby, I think two days after her trial was over. Immediately, it was given up for adoption. Good. 
this girl did not find out that her mother was Diane Downs. I don't think until maybe she was like 18 or 19, I believe. There's a really good 2020 special about it. She was not very good to her when she did find out that, you know, here's this girl that I gave up for adoption. But then again, I also wonder about her ex-husband because that Christy and Danny, Danny wasn't his biological son. So it makes me wonder why he didn't get at least Christy. Maybe they didn't want to separate him or maybe, you know, I don't know what happened there. I have questions. If someone has answers, I want to know. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there about Diane Downs. I didn't say all of it. She actually, her childhood was kind of interesting. Her background, she did claim that her father molested her. She recanted later on. She said that that was a lie. She shouldn't have said that because her father was actually sticking up for her the entire time. Um, he was like, she would never do this. You know, while she was going, if I killed my kids, if I shot them, wouldn't I have done a better job of it on the news where everyone could see it? That's what she was saying. He was out there advocating for her going, Diane would never do this. Um, she could never do it. She, um, she did eventually say that was not the truth. Um, she said she was not, I guess she was just trying to get sympathy from people, making excuses about why she is insane. Um, There's no telling. She's got some serious, serious issues. Okay, so I finished my eyes off camera because I was getting distracted and couldn't do it by, on the camera. But, so Diane is still in prison. She's still alive. She received the harshest sentence that they could give you. The judge actually talked like he wanted to give her death, but he couldn't give it to her in Oregon. Um, where they are, he's he gave her um, life in prison. She does get parole hearings, but she doesn't get parole. She's not going to get out. You can watch her testify at one of her parole hearings, actually, and it's she sounds like a crazy pants. That's Diane Downs. She shot her kids and killed one of them and harmed the other two really, really, really badly. If you have anything else to add to it, just drop it down in the comments. Um, if you have anything that you want us to test or if you've got a product you want us to try out, maybe makeup wise, drop it down in the comments. Um, if you have a crime that you want us to talk about, drop it down in the comments. Go ahead and subscribe and like this video. Maria will be back. She'll do a get ready with me video next week on her own. And then I think we're going to do one of our request videos that we got that one of our um, subscribers requested for us. So um, thanks for watching. Bye, you guys.